best brook trout fishing in the world. My dad used to fish here all the time. And build that dam. This is really nostalgic for me. These things run like crazy. If your day starts going better than good, and gooder than better, that's a great thing. The ultimate day with really the ultimate fish. You think you're good? Let's dance. Maybe the best fishing day of my life right here. Whoa! Oh! Oh, no, I didn't. I've never seen anything like this. The Fish in Canada Show. Brought to you in part by Sale, the Canadian Outdoors Superstore. Coleman, the outdoor company. Cooper Tires, life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. And Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters. Could you imagine catching a 14 pound, eight ounce brook trout? Or even crazier, a double hookup of a five and a 6.8 pounder on a single line with two baits the very next day. That's what the Nipigon River in Northern Ontario was like 100 years ago. Visualize an afternoon catch of literally a barrel of five pounders. These guys weren't into catch and release. They were filling barrels to, to, to take home. Brook trout heaven beyond anything we can imagine today. It's a huge history. It goes back uh, 170 years. However, this 48 kilometer stretch of water running from Lake Nipigon to Lake Superior over a descent of 95 meters was too powerful a torrent for the government to ignore. Power development began in the Nipigon Signature Site in 1918 and five dams and 30 years later, with the completion of the Pine Portage Dam in 1950, the shape of this magnificent waterway had completely changed. And result, the damming had increased water levels over 100 feet and flooded out almost 16 kilometers of whitewater, rapids, waterfalls, and pools. When that dam was built up there at Pine Portage, flooded out, for, created Foregan Lake, flooded out all the famous pools and, and riffles, people basically went away. The government got its power all right, but it destroyed the brook trout ecosystem and rapidly depleted its population. You know, that's what destroyed this river at least uh, and changed it from the way it was into what it is today. There's still a good riverine habitat immediately below that Pine Portage Dam and around the split rock area. And as a result, it's still, you know, pretty good fishery in there. In fact, it's it probably, because it was, you know, the shoreline is so vertical in through there, those 300 foot cliffs on either side of you there, the effect on the water levels wasn't as great and the uh, destruction of the habitat wasn't as great. OPG and the MNRF, along with many other regional remedial action teams, have been working since the 70s to restore the brook trout population back to what it was in the 30s. That's one of the reasons we're here today. We're celebrating the success of this discipline management as seen by the resurgence of these amazing fish. Dr. Cook, uh, he caught that world record, the 14 and a half pounder. That really brought on the fame again. And what better way to celebrate this success than with a festival? The Nipigon River Brook Trout Festival, held in July on the anniversary of Dr. Cook's boating of the largest brook trout ever caught way back in 1915. It's a family weekend focused on angling and uh, there is no derby involved. We're trying to focus a little bit on conservation. When you appreciate the history, I think you appreciate what you have today. Brook trout numbers and size are the draw here, but size specifically. The brookies grow really big here, and only here, because aside from their particular needs for fresh, clean, cold, fast moving, and well aerated water, they must also have, as their Latin name suggests, spring water. Nipigon River brook trout grow big because the fish are growing in in great habitat. Perfect water temperatures, large body of water with lots of growing space and lots of food. Oh man. The most astonishing part of a trip to this area of the Nipigon River is access. With images of raging rapids from top to bottom, the unknowing angler thinks the Nipigon is only accessible by freighter canoe, portage points and a grizzly seasoned local guide. This in fact is the furthest from the truth. I drove up from southern Ontario with our big Prince craft dropped it in the water, drove through some of the most scenic boat rides ever, and was fishing in no time. Wow, this fish, if I can just get in this pocket here, which I think I can, this is gonna be awesome if I can get in this pocket. He's coming in with me now, look at this. Nice looking speckled trout. A lot of mayhem coming up. That's the problem with fishing a spot like this, especially by yourself, folks. You gotta really be careful. Gorgeous fish. Look at this, folks, if I can get him in, him or her, yes. Look at that speck. 
Oh, look at that. Okay. Oh, you are. Oh, he's unhooked. He's unhooked. Oh. You want to see some colors on a speckled trout, on a brook trout? That is as nice as it gets right there. I'm going to give her a little, a little plunge if I can because this current's kind of crazy. Gone. What a gorgeous fish. Wow. Maybe the best fishing day of my life right here. The successful development of fertilized brook trout eggs requires extensive groundwater discharge areas for spawning. Whoa. Who'd have thought that the shoreline was as important to the spawn as the quality of water? <laughs> this is turning out quite nice. Nice new technique for me, drop shotting speckled trout. Now, I'm in a crazy area, but I knocked down the power poles, and, uh, and now I can sit here and fight this fish as long as he doesn't go around the poles, which is where he's kind of going right now. Wow. I'll tell you, when you're anchored off, when your power pole is down, or your anchor on the motor guide, then you gotta, you got to fight on your hands. This is the fish that I drove a long ways to catch right here. That's the species. Crazy. Get her head out of the water a little bit. Nicely done. Wow. Good looking fish. Now this is a very muted colored brook trout. Oh, she's a tag fish. It might surprise a lot of people that up to 50% of those fish that you're catching have been caught and released previously. And, and I learned that through tagging. They've been caught and released and up to five times some of the fish. <laughs> I'm trying to see Emmy. It says, let me go. Ah, that's hilarious. Keeping those fish, you'd be a long time waiting for the next one to come along if you kept every one that you caught. And that's the way it used to be. Hey, baby. <laughs> I contacted the Nipigon MNRF with the tag information. It was a three year old fish that was originally tagged on September 23rd, 2014, above the Pine Portage Dam in West Bay on Lake Nipigon. Somehow, this resilient little terminator traveled to the dam, came crashing down the water that no human could ever survive, came out pretty much unscathed, and is still voraciously feeding to this day. To say the brook trout is a tough beast is definitely an understatement. Hey, did you know that Dr. Cook's world record brook trout had a very adventurous afterlife? After it was caught, it was carried out of the bush and was weighed several days later at 14 and a half pounds. Now, because it was so big, there was some controversy about its species. So the skin was sent to Ottawa for confirmation by the experts. After it was deemed to be, in fact, a speckled trout. It was skin mounted on birch bark and sometime later given to the railways to put on display. The mount was used as a promotion to go to the Nipigon by rail, of course, and catch monster fish. It finally came home to the Nipigon Museum in 1978 where it was virtually destroyed in a museum fire in 1990. Today, even an old picture of that huge fish makes you want to get out there and go fish in Ontario. Mm, tap, tap, tap. I think there's some rubble down there. Or something. Go! Oh, yeah! That was totally opposite what's normally happening. Normally I'm catching the fish on the drift. This was on the swing into the shore, and I stayed with it. Okay, what I've noticed with these fish right now, doesn't, it's not pulling much. All of a sudden, she's gonna rip. She's gonna rip a tunnel line out of here. Once, it, once they know they're hooked. <laughs> uh, there's gotta be just maybe, they're, they're putting the challenge out to you. Okay, you think you're good? Let's dance. Okay, this fish is ready for my net. Oh, it was going back for that trolling motor. I think that fish like, she wants to. Wow. This may be the best fishing day of my life right here. Speckled trout like that. <laughs> oh man, you see mama. Oh my gosh, just crazy. Okay, 
I'm gonna do this fish the honors of a, a net release. There she goes. <laughs> this is it, I'm in heaven and I'm, I'm not ready to stop yet. I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> when planning a fishing trip like this, I try to prepare as best I can. I know my dad and his friends had great success here with big spoons. I've done well here in the past with bright colored jigs as well as spinners and small shiny spoons, so I'm good there. However, I had a hunch that a drop shot rig would work really well here. With soft plastics resembling minnows, insect larvae, and sculpins, as well as keeping a safety backup of live crawlers, I figured this rig could be a killer, and I was right. Oh, 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 oh I missed one. Uh, missed him. He came back. Yeah, he came back. <laughs> Loose the drag off, Peter. Oh, these fish are bulldogs, too. They're just little bulldogs. I fished the Nipigon River once before in my life, and it was pretty good, but it wasn't this good. Uh, live release is a lot more popular today than it was uh, when I moved here. People have all kind of lined up to help restore this fishery, and it is slowly coming back. And I think, uh, I think the fishing experience people have today, it's much better than it was uh, 27 years ago. In fact, by today's standards, it's pretty, pretty darn good fishing. They're doing something totally right. And I love it. And that just, that just tells you right there that people catching and keeping and killing and eating that fish, this fish of this size, any of the fish I'm catching today this size, okay, it, it won't work. That just doesn't work. Live release provides an incredible fishery. There's no question about it. And, and the fact that those fish have been caught and released before really doesn't detract from the experience that you get to have. It feels so good to release such a gorgeous fish. Bingo! Booyah and all those words. Gordy Bowman, I hope you're watching me, Dad, because your, your river you put me onto is the most amazing brook trout fishery ever. And I, every story you told me now, I have to believe you. It is so awesome. Wow. Let me get these glasses, they're falling off. I'm gonna try and get a little grip on him. I'll hold him over in the net. She so doesn't do a swan dive when we totally lose him. And booyah. That is so, oh, look at that. Look at that painting right there. Okay, he's gonna go right over top of my net, folks. Bye bye, buddy. Oh, what a stunning. That was a stunning looking fish. I'm having the, the ultimate day with really the ultimate fish. That's all I can say. I have one last hope for a real tank of a speck, the raging nasty water from the dam. Today's hot spot is where my biggest speck of the day came from. The waypoint on your screen will get you there. This is a classic current seam that trout will use as a feeding and resting area. Spinners, minnow baits and live bait will all work here. As a word of caution, Please be careful here as the water rushing down from the Pine Portis Dam is extremely fast. I highly recommend a fishing guide on your first trip to the Nipigon in regards to not only the good fishing areas, but safety to you and your boat. For more hotspots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com. I'm on the world famous Nipigon River, known for its big rapids, <laughs> and of course, its big brook trout. This is awesome. I've tucked the boat in a protected area just outside some of the craziest water I have ever Stop. fished. This looks like the perfect spot. Come on. Woo! You came in way too easy. I thought, what's going on for the size of this fish? Whoa! Oh! Oh, no, he didn't. He spun on me. These Nipigon rookies are absolute firecrackers. The fight like this is something you just won't see from any other freshwater fish. I've never seen anything like that. This is going nuts. I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna chase him because this water is crazy. He came in that boat so easy. I looked at this and said, wow, you know what? This is a decent sized trout. Like a typical Nipigon River, what you'd come for, Nipigon River. 
speck or brook trout. And he came in so easy, I thought, wow, is it because of the water temp? The water temps are just in the low 50s, but these are cold water fish. I could not have written this fishing story any better. Committing to a destination so far from home is taking a chance. However, this is the Nipigon River, home of the gorgeous, gigantic, and let's not forget world famous brook trout. Surrounded by unspoiled wilderness, frigid flowing water in a landscape carved by Mother Nature. Hats off to the MNRF and their affiliates for the outstanding work they've done to restore the Nipigon River. Oh, what a toad! And bring back this great fishery. And I'm gonna put her back in the net to release her. Hopefully she doesn't flip out of my hands right now. Is they're really slimy. Check that out, folks. That is the world famous Nipigon River brook trout or speckle trout. What a gorgeous, gorgeous, look at the meat, how fat that fish is. I'm gonna put her in the net and release her. <laughs> she wants to stay in the net. In my humble opinion, the brook trout fishery in the Nipigon River is without a doubt a top 10 fishing destination in the entire world. What a, what a fight! Ah, oh, I'm, I'm so proud of that fish. I'm so happy that it just, uh, that brings back uh, a lot of memory from a few years ago and really good memories from my dad. My dad used to fish here all the time. He helped uh, build that dam. He's got a lot of family uh, memory for me. Like he told me old pictures of his his specs, and he's got like a six and three quarter pounder, etc. And uh, this is very nostalgic for me. So that that fish is awesome, absolutely awesome. In 1889, there's a fellow by the name of uh, A.R. McDonough. He wrote a, a, a words that I, you know, I, they're still relevant today. He says, "Unless it is cherished, the glory of the Nipigon may fade." And the stories of its marvelous attractions will become a tradition of the past. The Nipigon River, it continues to impress even a hundred years after its claim to fame. And in my opinion, with proper fish and water management, world-class brook trout fishing will be available for generations to come. It's a bucket lister that every angler should try. To get to today's unbelievable speckled trout fishing, I drove north on Highway 400 to Highway 69. I then headed northwest on Highway 17. I stayed on 17 westbound past the town of Nipigon and then turned south on 628 towards the town of Red Rock. I finally reached my destination at the classic Quebec Lodge, which is home base for Nipigon River adventures. Today's KLP is definitely location. The Nipigon River in Ontario, Canada is the number one destination for brook trout in the world, bar none. It's got lots of fish, it's got big fish. This place holds the world record at 14 pounds, eight ounces. You can drive to it, the scenery is outstanding. You cannot beat the Nipigon River. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks. Nothing works harder than a ram. Stearns, trusted on the water since 1952. Mercury Outboards, number one on the water. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine.